Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. And I hope you had a lovely summer, beautiful holidays. We're all back now. It's September. Today I'm swatching a color that uh, I like very, very much. And today we will see why. This is Prussian Blue, a color that I feel is a bit out of fashion. There is not a lot of talking about this beautiful pigment. Maybe because um, there is some talking about it's a uh, light fastness, uh, but uh, the Prussian blues I'm swatching today, they're all light fast. And from what I know, the important thing is not to mix it with white, because if you mix it with white, then it has stability problems. Let's dive in and let's start swatching my Prussian blues. Having said that I like this color, I don't really know if uh, there is a strong difference between uh, among uh, different brands. I use uh, mainly one brand, two brands. One is uh, Senelier and the other one is Paul Rubens. This is in, in my studio palette and this is in my go-to Paul Rubens for all my sketches. and. Uh, I have also, I started using it with Kotman, but other ones, I don't know them very well. I I, ha I have used uh, Van Gogh also, but the other ones, I have no idea. So I don't know if they look all the same or if they're very consistent. Let's start as usual with Windsor and Newton. So Prussian Blue is PB27, it's very, very strong color, it's very powerful. It was the first uh, synthetic uh, blue pigment uh, and it rapidly replaced the very expensive uh, ultramarine uh, derived by Lapis Lazuli. It's non-granulating, not very easy to lift actually. It's a bit interchangeable with phthalo. It is very dark in mass tone. And can be watered down to a light blue. And this is Windsor and Newton. Quite a beautiful color, right? Now Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Mm. First impression is uh, it is quite similar. Of course, we have to wait until they dry. You must be very careful with Prussian blue about the quantity of pigment you're using because it's such a strong color that. Um, it tends to overwhelm and it is quite, um, I would say it's slightly different, it's warmer, it is slightly different. It looks warmer more towards ultramarine for me, but it's subjective. Schminke, Schminke. They were all PB27, all Prussian blue PB27. The Rembrandt version had a better dispersion on paper than Windsor and Newton, I have the feeling. And this is Schminke, Schminke always performing in an outstanding manner. Once again, I have this feeling that the hue is slightly different. Now I find that blue is one of those colors that are not very easy to capture on camera. So I hope that uh, the difference will be visible. And this is lovely, very good dispersion on paper. Lovely color. They're not at all all the same. What do you think, my Mary? Uh, it's the first time that I swatch these uh, brands because I have only used Senelier in my life. Mm. 
My menu for me is maybe more similar to Rembrandt, slightly warmer, incredibly, incredibly enjoyable experience. Prussian blue has a good dispersion as a pigment, PB27, and my Mary is always a pleasure. There was a lot of pigments, so I didn't really water it down, but you see, actually, they're all different so far. I would have never realized the difference if I didn't swatch them side by side. Then my Sennelier. Sennelier. Up. A follower suggested me to use this uh, opener if I was in difficulty. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Okay. Sennelier. You know, Sennelier is honey-based, so sometimes there might be some separation, but it's also, it's beauty to be honey-based. I really like this brand. It's love it or hate it. And this is very different. So having basically only used uh, this uh, Prussian Blue, it's more towards a cyan, I think this one. Hope you can see it's has a greenish undertone that is very beautiful, but definitely different from Rembrandt or My Mary, which are much warmer. This is wonderful, I think, this Sennelier version. Look at this. So, this is uh, Prussian Blue for Sennelier. Then I have uh, Holbein from my palette, and it's this one. A lad from a follower that the follower adorable sent to me and this is Holbein it went so easily once again this is more towards ultramarine is warmer it's like I don't know maybe like a phthalo or red shade such a pleasure Holbein great painting experience uh, swatching experience actually at this stage how deep it's beautiful it's velvety now i have put gottman here because it's right below windsor and newton so that we the professional line so that we can compare the two okay my first prussian blue ever was this gottman gottman is always very nice i think still pb27 I think it's quite different from the Windsor and Newton version. Once again, we must wait when they dry. It's quite saturated. Absolutely adequate. Mm, dispersion is not as good as in other professional brands, but absolutely saturated and adequate. Very, very good. I have Van Gogh, one more student grade line just below Rembrandt because they're both uh, made by Italians. This is the student grade, whereas uh, Rembrandt is the professional line. Royal Talents. Mm. Van Gogh is always never disappointing. I think that uh, PB27 is such a strong pigment that uh, even if in student range, they are very saturated, very nice. It has quite a dry shift. Can you see that? When it dries, it becomes much lighter. Of course, uh, dispersion is not as good as in Rembrandt, so the painting experience is slightly less uh, enjoyable, pleasurable, but um, very saturated, very strong. Very dark uh, in Maston, but when it dries, it becomes much, much lighter. It's very transparent to this color, so it's perfect for glazing. 
Then I have one more Wizard and Newton professional, and it is Antwerp blue, which is lighter compared to Prussian blue, still a PB27. Apparently it's easier to lift, so if you use it in uh, sky, for instance, uh, it's great for lifting clouds. But um, although Windsor & Newton declare perfect light fastness, Handprint, for instance, says it's not so light fast. So if you use it for a sketchbook, um, it's okay, but um, if you want to be on the safe side, maybe use a PB27 from these uh, great brands. So you're safer regarding light fastness. And this is absolutely lighter, different shade. And this is Antwerp blue by Windsor & Newton Professional. Then I have uh, from Schminke also a second color, which is Paris blue. And it is a mixture of tallow blue, green shade, red shade, and PB27. I thought I had space. I thought it was uh, curious. It was interesting to swatch it. So this Paris blue, I like blues. Um, blue often have uh, geographical names like Berlin blue, Delft blue, Faenza blue, Paris blue, Antwerp blue. That's interesting. Maybe one day we will tackle this topic. And it's beautiful. It's, it's deeper, it's stronger because Stalo is so staining so it's a beautiful color though it's in between phthalo and prussian blue of course now paul rubens you see this is uh, prussian blue i have used a lot in my life and um, it's quite a lovely prussian blue paul rubens as you know i think it's a good brand this is squeezed from tubes and it wets very very easily problem with uh, Paul Rubens is that um, you cannot buy them open stock or better you can but it's complicated from China, AliExpress, quite expensive open stock, uh, not as, they are not as expensive when you buy them in sets but if you want to start painting with the artist range this is a good starting point. And it is much lighter than all this. I really never realized until today it was a, a lighter Prussian blue. Actually, I forgot I have one more and it is Lucas. I have this huge palette that I use when I go to, I take a watercolor class every Monday night. And that this is the palette that is in my backpack there. And this is Prussian Blue from Lucas. I say every time, Lucas really is an underrated brand. I can tell you, this is not pre-wetted. It wet it so easily. I haven't used it much. And nice dispersion on paper. And this is Lucas. Okay, so now we have a complete uh, a complete scenario of um, my Prussian blues we let them dry and then I uh, will come back but before we try some mixes so I this is uh, a mixture between uh, Prussian blue and Indian yellow which is the most uh, classical mixture it should give hooker's green originally hooker's green was Prussian blue with the gamboge, but gamboge, as you know, is uh, toxic. So I have replaced with Indian yellow. Oh, any warm yellow is beautiful mixture between Prussian blue and yellow. Now lemon yellow. Just a touch of Prussian blue for a very vibrant light green. It's a leaf green. Tallow green gives a beautiful turquoise. Alizarin crimson. 
and velvety purple. Pyrrhon orange, one of my favorite colors, so transparent. Mm, a muted greenish gray, beautiful. Lavender. Mm. Fresh and blue kills lavender, a murder. Burnt sienna should give a grey. It's a bit weak, maybe. A classic yellow ochre. Beautiful green. Paints grey. A muted dark blue almost denim. A classic combination, Venetian red. Ah, oh, lovely dark. Now oh, burnt amber. Mm. It's a glowing dark with a greenish undertone. And dioxazin violet. So this is my Prussian blue. blue. I'm not convinced of this uh, burnt sienna. I don't know, it's a bit weird. I think it should be nicer. So I'll try again one more burnt sienna. Yeah. I think it's better now. And I will recap. So this is Indian yellow, lemon yellow, taro green, alizarin crimson, pearl orange, lavender, burnt sienna, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, paints grey, um, Venetian red. Burnt amber, dioxazine in violet. And why not? Uh, I will try a very quick uh, monochrome sketch just to see the behavior on paper. You know that I like to, to really try in a sketch my colors. I think it's easier to, to understand the behavior. It's not easy monochrome portrait, but uh, let's see.
this is a girl now we let her dry never my best pieces of art when i sketch quickly on youtube don't know why i get uh, emotional so i don't give my best but just what i call an advanced swatching just to see the behavior on paper we let her dry and we go back to our swatches and mixes and then we'll come back to her okay my hands are slightly blue <laughs> pretend you don't see it i have prussian blue all over because it's very staining it's hard to wash away but in any case now my swatches are dry i would have bet a lot of money that uh, they were very consistent across brands and i would have lost my money because they're not at all consistent across brands there is a wide variety of hues and shades across brands Celine is probably the most different it goes towards it's very greenish it goes towards the turquoise almost uh, some of them are more towards cyan like schminke for instance or and some are warmer like rembrandt for instance uh, this antwerp blue by windsor and newton i don't think it's very interesting because uh, it's uh, it's too light because one of the properties is this rich deep dark mass tone so in antwerp uh, antwerp blue you lose this property and also there are some light fastness concerns so i don't think this is very interesting Surprisingly, the two student range, Kotman and Van Gogh, are beautiful. They're so saturated. They are among the most beautiful in the range. Lucas, as usual, is very beautiful when wet and when dry, it tends to be slightly more, I don't want to say chalky because it's not chalky, it's a little, slightly dull compared to the beautiful jewel tones of uh, other brands. I think that um, they're all very beautiful. Windsor & Newton, maybe I should try again to swatch it because I have the feeling that I have put less pigment in Windsor & Newton. I can immediately add some color because I think it wasn't very fair in the comparison. And I will add some color. Because really the Cotman is almost more pigmented. I'm tempted to use Cotman in my studio palette, but no doubt that Windsor and Newton is always performing. Find the Rembrandt, very beautiful, among the most beautiful. And the Maimerias also is very nice. Senelier is completely different, but very beautiful. Holbein always stands out. Students great are very nice. We said the Windsor and Newton Antwerp not very interesting. This Paris blue is also very nice for sky. Paul Rubens, great color. Lucas, slightly dull. Very beautiful when wet, but not when it dries. Let me try this. Now it's dry and what I like about this Winsor & Newton is the value range. It can be really dark in mass tone and then it goes very light when um, watered down. Same with Schminke but Winsor & Newton is even richer in mass tone. I like colors that have a value range, especially in monochromatic sketches. They give the best because you have different uh, values that you can use. Um, also, it's very transparent, so it's perfect for glazing. Okay, let's go to mixes. I think that it is in mixes that Prussian blue gives the best because the mixes that you get from Prussian blues are really wonderful. Look at the greens. This mix with India yellow, so it should be a sort of a hokey green. It's fantastic. It gives you very natural greens. Also with lemon yellow, you get this wonderful leaf green. With tallow green, you have a beautiful turquoise. This is, this is Prussian blue, okay? This is uh, Prussian blue. A lizard and crimson, a deep, wonderful violet. With pyro orange, 
um, it's a brown, it's almost a Van Dyke brown. You see that Prussian blue really gives such a wide uh, range of tones and colors. We love it that it's not so bad because you must be careful to the ratio, put just a touch of Prussian blue, but for a winter sky, I think this is very lovely. This burnt sienna came out wrong, so this is really with burnt sienna. And what I like is that you get um, the dark that has um, green in it. It is really glowing. Same with burnt amber. Look, it's glowing. It has some green undertone. It's really beautiful. Yellow ochre, you have this um, dull green that uh, can be used for distant, for instance, vegetation. With paints gray, you have a more intense uh, Prussian blue. You can use this, for instance, for denim. I think that the best of this mix is, is after Indian yellow is with Venetian red. Look at the wonderful dark. It's alive. It's, it's beautiful dark. It's vibrant. It's, uh, it's deep. It's glowing. It's fantastic dark. Burnt amber, very nice. With dioxas in violet, I thought that we would have got um, a warmer blue, a sort of ultramarine, but it didn't come out as I thought. But these are the mixes. Of course, you can try many, many more. My favorite, Venetian red, Indian yellow. Also this pyrrole orange is very nice. And you can, you can get fantastic turquoise if you mix with phthalo green, very nice. The poor girl, I have cut her head because I had no space here, but so the value range is fantastic for monochromatic uh, sketches. I could add some darker stripes here. Uh, when they dry, you could uh, really see the layers below. Okay, now the girl, just uh, I have added even more shadow under her neck because there is a very important dry shift. That's why it's important to also use it uh, in an advanced swatching in a sketch because uh, it gives you really the, a better idea of the behavior on paper. What I see, what I can learn from this sketch is that Prussian Blue has a very wide value range. It really lets you paint monochromatic sketch. And I have only used Prussian blue here. The glazing properties let you add depth to your sketch and also the beauty of, uh, the beauty of watercolor is uh, transparency, I think. And uh, the dry shift lets you build gradually in your values. So, I wanted to explain you why I love this color in my palette. I love it because it uh, lets you give uh, wonderful mixes. It's very beautiful on its own, a wide range of values, very, very transparent. Uh, I know it's a bit uh, out of fashion, but still a very nice color to have in your palette. Consider it. I would like to know what is your experience with Prussian Blue. Of course, you know that I love to learn from you. I love to chat with my followers. Uh, do you use uh, Prussian Blue? Do you have one in your palette, in your studio palette? And uh, what brand do you use? What the brand was I missing? I don't have a Daniel Smith, for instance. I can't have them all, it's not exhaustive, but I would like to know from you what is your favorite brand in Russian Blue? Thanks a lot for having watched this video with me. And uh, if you have liked it, give me a thumb up, comment below and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Ciao, friends. Ciao, ciao, amici. Ciao.